won't? And which semis do you like? Yeah, I, I don't think so. Uh, Ty, I, first of all, great to see you. I, I think semis have been the key chart for the market in good times and bad. Uh, they've, down, they've underperformed the S&P by about 5% in the last 12 sessions, but have outperformed the S&P by 43% over the last couple of years and have outperformed big cap tech. So we know how important, um, like NVIDIA has been a monster and their last round of numbers showed you just how important uh, data center up 55%. Some of the other uh, EV, AI, gaming dynamics of their business. The problem with NVIDIA is it's a high multiple stock at a time that the market's punishing high multiple stocks. I, I think Taiwan Semi uh, is is underestimated is one of those underrated overrated players everybody knows how big and powerful they are um, but at 25 times it's cheap they are you know two-thirds of their business is now leading edge technology they have pricing power uh, and I think it, they will be less cyclical than other players so I, I think semis critical to this market maybe choppy um, but you know did, they are absolutely did you pick uh, a semi story. stock did you pick a semi stock in our stock draft do you happen to recall I don't know why you're bringing up difficult, uh, you know, memories and issues for me. I don't think I was anywhere near these names. And, and I think I've got a couple that have been dogs. So All let's right. just leave it at that. I'll see you in April. Well, see I'll see you in April. You got April. a lot of time left. Gina is just smiling here, just <laughs> loving this. And so is, and so is Seema. J.P. Morgan is loving it, naming McDonald's a top safety pick as we head into the new year. The firm saying its U.S. business is thriving. Golden Arches should keep serving up gains in a high inflation, low yield environment. McDonald's shares up about 20% on the year in line with gains for the S&P 500. They've also, SEMA, got apparently a promotion coming where it's the Mar Mariah Carey 12 days of Christmas free meals. Uh, if you buy a, a dollar's worth on the uh, mobile de uh, de device on December 13th, you can get a free Big Mac, uh, McChicken on the 14th. Today you get a cheeseburger um, would you go for this? Is this a reason to go to McDonald's for you? I think, listen, promotions, any type of deal is uh, a way to attract consumers. I saw one that also stood out, stood out to me. I really like their crispy chicken sandwich tie, mm -hmm. and that now comes with a free medium fries and free medium soft drink. So listen, that perhaps is enough to get sold, especially in an environment we are dealing with inflation. Economists expect inflation only to rise even further, and Strong demand has allowed certain industry titans like McDonald's to continue to raise prices, right? I guess the right. question is how much longer, especially if uh, that cost of the burger or that chicken sandy is going to cost even more right. going into February or March of next year. Gina, what do you think here? We've had, I'm, I, I'm told, prior uh, uh, gambits like this, the Sowetie meal, uh, the BTS meals. <laughs> uh, and I'm old, but I'm not that old. I know who Sowetie is, uh, Travis Scott. Do you like McDonald's, Gina? As a stock, look. I think from a from a stock perspective, it's a dividend. It's a dividend payer, and that going into inflation is probably a good way to sort of insulate your your portfolio. So, from a dividend perspective, it's a great stock to own. From an inflation perspective, you know, McDonald's is at the cheap end of food generally, and so they will continue to have uh, demand. McDonald's is at a, at the cheap end of food. I, I think no truer words have ever been spoken on this program, <laughs> Tim Seymour. <laughs> Well, uh, look, I, I think the unit growth, so I'll, I'll leave aside the quality of the menu. I will say uh, McDonald's is hip again, not only because of their music, uh, you know, branding, celebrity uh, sponsorships, but because of what they've done to the menu, the kiosks, the, the loyalty program. But I think the key to the stock really is, is the unit growth. So they're actually growing stores after uh, cutting back in store closures seven years or so in a row. They're now actually geographically repositioning mm -hmm. some new stores and, in fact, will be growing uh, 5 to 10 percent over the next couple of years. Yeah. I, I hate to be a curmudgeon, but I, I don't love the Mariah Carey Christmas song. It gets in my head. Yeah, I can't. I, it, it just doesn't go away. Oh, come on. Uh, I, <laughs> I, just, I don't know. All right. Next up, uh, Carnival Cruise Lines set to report results before the bell on Monday. The street expecting a loss of $1.43 on $1.4 billion in rev. Uh, the stock has gotten crust uh, since news of the Omicron variant uh, broke last month, posting near double-digit losses alongside Royal Caribbean and Norwegian. Will rising cases and hospitalizations spell more cancellations and slowdowns in bookings. Seema, what are you hearing? Yeah, here we go again, Tyler. You know, last quarter, Carnival unveiled these eye-popping targets. It said that it would be able to break even by early 2022 and also uh, bring 65% of its ships back to sea by end of this year. So the big question on Monday will be, uh, to what degree are those timelines <laughs> shifting because of Omicron? Um, and it also raises just a more existential question, Tyler, around travel. If a new variant is going to pop up every three to four months, how does that impact travel? The increase in cancellations, customers 
rebooking? I think that's the big question going forward because uh, this familiar timeline, it's something that we're now starting to see. Mm -hmm. One silver lining, Priceline just unveiled that travel prices for the first quarter uh, are actually up for hotels by 18% compared to the same time last year. That tells me that the pent-up demand is still there. They may, may be rebooking a trip for this week, but they're booking that for now, the first quarter of next year. How about Carnival, Tim? I mean, it maybe it takes some, uh, takes some courage to jump in when things are bad, but maybe it's the right thing to do. The wrong thing to do is make fun of Mariah Carey, by the way. So uh, the right thing to do with Carnival is to be tactical going into these numbers. I, I think, first of all, you, we forget with, with COVID stocks that were certainly in, in the, 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 the tornado, uh, you make the most money when things go from terrible to just bad. And that was, that was Carnival that's still up 130%, yet you know, down near the bottom of its range. The key is I don't think they're going to give you the kind of guidance that the market wants in terms of mm -hmm. uh, their financial outlook. I do think break even on free cash flow by second or third quarter. But I think longer term, um, by 23, they will be plus 15 percent to their EBITDA of pre-pandemic. That's the key. It's not the same balance sheet. But I think on a medium term, right. I think this is a great call. And I think tactically into Monday, I think investors are going to make some money on the trade. Too. Gina, quick uh, final thought, either on Carnival or Mariah Carey. Uh, well, I will pass on Mariah Carey, but on Carnival, I think the broad story is that we are going to have to learn how to live with variants. I don't think that that's going away. And as we continue to have testing availability and treatment availability, all of those things are becoming more broadly available. Um, companies like Carnival will be able to get back to pre-pandemic highs. All right, let's final, uh, go finally to AMC. Shares jumping uh, thanks to your neighborhood Spider-Man. As I mentioned, my son saw it, said it was fantastic. Theater was packed. Chain says last night Spider-Man no Way Home debut, highest grossing opening night in December in its history. More than a million Americans watched the movie at an AMC, uh, the highest number in two years. Gina, is it more than a meme? Yeah. Uh, well, is it more than a movie? There's certainly a reopening frenzy to go back to the movie theater, but the business model generally is still challenged. Um, and, and, you know, you look at sort of what's happening with, with, you know, streaming, what Disney was able to do with their launches, with their new uh, uh, movies during the pandemic, really paved the way for a changing industry. So I think you have to watch the industry trends. But look, I'm doing my part. I'm going to see House of Gucci tonight. Wow, good for you. Tim, how about you? I mean, you've got on the one hand, you've got this, this apparent blockbuster in Spider-Man. You've got House of Gucci for Gina, um, and, and, but you've also got Omicron. Look, I, I, is this a movie theater company again? So it actually, that's what they do. I get it. So, so pre-pandemic, 720 million was their, you know, was was their top line. Like, are, are you telling me that suddenly their their story is better because they have a blockbuster release? We know what's going on here. This is this is a meme stock. This has been kamikaze investing. It, it was. You know, down 50% into this print, so you have a huge relief rally. You still have 16% short interest. Like, I think the only thing that would save this business is getting Mariah Carey uh, to do individual live shows around some of these theaters. But otherwise, um, you know, I, yeah. I, I just don't see why we're trying to, to think of this company as something different than it is. Yeah. And yet, on the day we're actually touting movie sales, um, we have to be reminded that this is a dying business. Yes, but the stock is still up 1,300% this year. That tells you something. Yeah. we got to leave it there. Uh, maybe for Mariah, it's the, it's the Santa's helper costume that I can't get past. We'll see you later, guys. Thank you.